Well, good afternoon. I am Joe Corson with Synergist Technologies. And uh, we're here for a What's New and Exciting in Vault 2016. The Vault 16 release builds off of a strong Vault 15 R2, rounding out a number of item and bomb enhancements, better integrating copy design with additional functionality, and a number of important updates to the CAD integrations. So we will be going over CAD integrations, copy design, lifecycle definitions, bomb enhancement, and then a little bit of Vault Office at the very end. Vault 16 provides basic file management for the new Inventor AnyCAD capabilities. Users adding third-party CAD files into their Inventor documents will be able to check in, check out, and open from Vault with support for these reference files, allowing them to be vaulted right next to your Inventor data. Now, one of the first things you'll notice when you're placing a third-party data into an inventor file is the new reference model option. Using this option, you'll bypass translation entirely. It places the native file into the design, and inventor creates and maintains a reference into the original design. When paired with Vault 16, you can then check in the assembly, carrying over the native files, not the translated versions. When you receive updated design files, simply update the files in Vault and open the top level assembly in Inventor. Any changes to the model can be updated in a single click, all while preserving the work you've already completed. Within Vault, you can perform many of the same actions on imported CAD data as you can with native Inventor files. File properties can be edited just like any other file managed inside Vault. You can also designate categories, apply lifecycle controls, and assign items to imported CAD files. So they can be easily managed alongside all of your other product data. In addition to third-party reference support, Inventor 16 also introduces support for AutoCAD underlays in the Inventor environment. Vault 16 provides reference support allowing users to add, check in, and check out drawing files used in the Inventor models. Under the, the new copy design tool. For those of you who did not get the Vault 15 R2 release, this will be completely new to you. The uh, first thing you'll notice about the copy design is a brand new interface from where the copy design was done inside the vault. Now it's outside. It's a completely separate program, but you get it with the vault client. Uh, with the copy design tool being outside the vault, this makes copies easier for those of you who do not live in the vault. The, the main grid displays the current configuration settings, including action applied to the original file, the new file name, the new copy design specific values like component ID and component quantity. These two values help you identify individual reference information, which reference the original component and how many references exist or are being created. In addition to the main grid, there are panels to help you see alternate views of the data being copied, find specific co source components, change the part number settings, or get an overview of the results. So now with the uh, with this stuff, you get to improve the efficiency of copy processes. You can now include multiple data sets in a single operation. You can now copy multiple assemblies and parts at once, even though they are not a direct parent or child. You can just copy a bunch of 
parts, prints, and assemblies, even though they're not related at all, which is really nice. You can also specify whether you would like to copy all the files or just the top-level nodes, which that you could always just pick the assemblies up top and just reuse everything underneath. And you can now do library files and non-CAD files in the copy design tool. Let me get that out of the way. Um, you're also getting more control over how individual files are handled during the copy operation. You can manually specify whether files are copied, reused, or removed, and you can also replace files during the copy operation, which you can now do using files that would be created as a part of the current copy design procedure. To provide a clear picture of all the configuration actions that will be carried out, there is an action panel on the side of the interface, which helps you identify issues early, such as files unintentionally being edited. The folder panel provides an intuitive view for renaming new folders, moving copied files to new folders, or initiating copy operations by dragging and dropping files or entire folders to the new design. As per one of the top requests for change, Autodesk has automated file numbering built right into the copy design process, which will remove the need for a secondary step. You can also immediately specify the category to place each file into and modify properties straight from the design tool. So this, this eliminates multiple steps. The copy design process will now execute faster because it's running on the server, not your local machine. That will remove the need to copy files to and from your server from your machine. So with Autodesk Vault 16, we have extended the use of flexible lifecycle definitions to help you better manage item lifecycles as well as files. As an administrator, you can now create multiple lifecycle definitions for each category, giving you more flexibility to define custom release processes that align, that align with how you handle different types of files or use the same release process for both items and files. With Vault 16, we focused on creating a single unified experience, so lifecycle definitions for items work exactly the same as it does for files. Lifecycle states can be added or removed, actions can be specified to occur automatically during a state change, and security settings can be applied to ensure only the right people are able to transition items from one state to another. Within the lifecycle definition, transition actions specific to items have been added. These can be set to check that children are released or not obsolete, and associated file links are released or up to date. These can be primary or secondary file links or design documents. Additional security options are also available to control who can view or edit items based on their current category or lifecycle state. You can make sure only the right people have access to the item at any point in time. You also have the option to extend the security definition to include the files associated with each item. Rather than simply locking primary files associated with an item, you can control documents per item state to apply item or custom security. Security settings can be unique for primary, secondary, and design, link, design document link types.
In addition to capturing specific item revision history, you are now able to view all item versions. You can easily see the changes made to all items between releases, including property and document updates on the general, history, where used, and bill of material tabs. You can now assign an item to a category on creation. You can still have predefined rules to assign a category. Administrators can designate which categories can be selected for creation. In direct response to a customer request, you can now use the Vault CAD add-ins, Vault Explorer, or the Job Processor to map and write back item properties directly to the CAD files for clearer and more accurate design documentation. The enhancements to bill of materials in this release provide a more flexible and collaborative approach to managing the item bill of material, especially in supporting raw material workflows with, with access to bill of material properties, support for multiple rows, and reporting directly out of the bond view. When working with merged bomb rows of raw materials, it's helpful to view how much and how long each component is within that group, in addition to the total quantity required. In Vault 16, we've added two new system-defined bomb rows, item quantity and, unity qu and unit quantity. This provides information along with new icons to make it easier to recognize the groups. To further support this workflow, Vault 2016 also supports custom bomb row properties that can either be user-defined or read-only properties mapped to parameters in your CAD file. It's easier to edit user-defined properties by directly accessing them in a grid by clicking on the field in the edit mode. In previous versions of Vault, bomb rows were automatically merged when matching part numbers were found, regardless of how it was set up in CAD. Vault 16 now support multiple instances of the same item on different rows, providing the ability to define unique properties to different rows of the same item, such as defining one instance as a spare part. Manual rows for the same item can be added and are easily defined by the new row type property which gives the visibility into which rows were added from CAD and which rows were added manually. Two other significant enhancements to bill of materials has been made in Vault 16. To help you better identify changes, the compare tool is now available and highlights any modifications that occurred between bomb versions. It's also easier to share information with the bomb report tool accessible directly inside the bomb view, where you can use default or custom templates with the option to include custom row properties. Traditionally, engineers are the core beneficiaries from using product and data management systems. After all, they are the ones who actually create the design data that gets stored there, and it helps them save time by better managing all that data. 
but all that information can be useful to people throughout the organization if they have access to it. For example, program and project managers who are hands-off with CAD can still need to view models and approve design release and ECOs. They also need to know the current status of projects. Manufacturing obviously needs the data, whether it is to print out a drawing, get the bill of materials, or initiate a ECO due to manufacturability issues. Tech pubs clearly need access to the design data, but they also create documentation that needs to be managed. And sales needs access as well, primarily, primarily to get the release designs but they could also be managing their quotes and bids or participate in ECOs. The new Vault Office Fit Client enables non-CAD users to create and edit supporting project and design data. And they also include additional capabilities to view, batch print, and even participate in ECOs and approval processes. The Vault Thick Client connects to Vault Workgroup and Professional Service, so not Vault Basic. Although it cannot be installed alongside an existing Vault Client, and it does restrict the number of basic CAD user capabilities. It, per month, it permits a user to modify non-CAD files, folders, ECO and custom objects and provides read-only interactions with CAD files and items. So I want to want to thank you for listening in and I hope you guys are still awake and excited. <laughs>